Welcome to the Kit Car History File series where we'll be going through the industry's past. We'll be visiting old marks of long ago, some modern ones, some mostly older stuff, a lot of archive information with photographs and information on the cars they made, the people involved and what happened to them. Hello, my name's Steve Hull, editor of TKC Mag and TotalKitCar.com and welcome to another episode in our Total Kit Car History File series. This time, uh, make no excuse or no apology indeed for featuring the Janetta Mark again. Massive fan, and, and who isn't really? I mean, the Walklet brothers were responsible for some of the greatest kit cars the industry's ever seen. Um, and hopefully, as uh, you listen to this, there'll be a, a, an image of a very young and handsome looking Ivor Walklet, the company's designer, flash up on, on your screen. Uh, Ivor, one of the nicest men I've ever met in my life. One of the most talented specialist car designers to to ever grace our industry and also one of the nicest gentlemen i've ever met a real gentleman uh, g15 must surely be one of his greatest hits it has to be uh, 800 of those were made he told me once he, over five series um launched in 1967 with a complete kit and kits were complete in those days uh, 845 pounds not the cheapest kit around or car around, but uh, a very comprehensive one. Um, went out of production in 1973. Never, I don't know if it was intended solely as a, as a, as a race car. I think it was primarily a, a lovely little two-seat road, road car that would have been absolutely perfect in this day and age with track days. A car you could drive and to the circuit and, and drive home again. Um, but one of the most successful, not only Ginetta's on track, but... Kit cars of all time, I would think, on in terms of circuit racing. Some very famous, um, very famous cars. This feature, actually, this this video feature, will look at primarily a chap called David Beams and the success that he enjoyed in his G15S back in the 60s, or 70s, I beg your pardon. But first of all, let's just look at a little bit of, of, of the history um, and other drivers, really. Um, there are some other Ginetta cars that have gone on, on track and, and found fame and fortune indeed. Uh, and some great works drivers. Uh, G4 in various guises. G10, short-lived but very, very important in Ginetta's history. And of course, the lovely G12. An image you'll see here will be uh, Maggie Blank Blankstone, who was pretty successful um, back in the day. Um, she latterly had some success at hill, in hill climbing um, and she held the Jerby on the Isle of Man course record for some time from 1993 in a pill beam single seater. But she had a very um, potent little tw uh, 1.6 litre Ford engine, cross flow engine uh, G12 that she used to race, I believe, in the NSCC championship, sports, sport racing in GT, around about 1969. And... Um, and then, of course, we, we come to uh, a favourite of mine, a lady called Alison Davis, who was the first UK lady national champion, and she deserves credit for that. She actually started racing back in 1970, uh, in the, and she won the Goodwin Trophy in a Diva GT. She then won the Embassy Trophy the following year, uh, that was 1971, which was her first year in a, G, in a G15, which was always supported and run by her husband, Chris and uh, her brother-in-law, Roger. She won the Goodwin Trophy and um, the Castro Award for Britain's leading lady driver in 1972, um, by which time she'd, she'd attracted a lot of interest and Femfresh um, became her a major sponsor and indeed Castro were suitably impressed that they, uh, sufficiently impressed that they also sponsored her for a good number of years. Um, never really gets the credit she deserves, I don't think, Alison Davis. Um, very skillful driver. I mean, she used to mix it in mod sports, which is a real headbangers ball of a series. You know, they talk about British touring cars being door banging. I mean, mod sports was the, the precursor of that. Some hairy cars and some hairy driving, but um, very, very good. Um, 1976, 1977, both those seasons, she was runner-up in the Shell Sport Ladies Championship. And 
she also um then in 1979 the lord, lord wakefield challenge trophy when she became as i mentioned a little while ago britain's first lady national champion when she won the brdc production sports car championship um excellent driver but that ties in nicely with the um the g15 um Ginetta had a particularly good period 1977, 78 and 79, as well as having a, a squadron, a little miniature squadron of, uh, of works drivers and some good drivers amongst them, Chris Meek, Barry Wood, uh, and of course the brilliant uh, Willie Green was a, was a Ginetta driver as well at that time. But 1977, David Beams, who we're coming to in a minute, he won the Prod Sports Championship, 77. Steve Cole well, was, uh, was actually runner-up, actually, in 1978. And then Alison won it in 1979. So it was a, a very productive series uh, for Ginetta. Always went well in that and mod sports. But uh, David Beams, a very interesting chap. Very, very interesting chap. Very talented driver. He, um, as I say, he, he used to mix it. If you look at one of the photos we've put up here, um, of a, of a, he's on the start line on the front row, far right. Look at some of the, 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 the competitors or the other uh, races he's up against. There's some really more, much more powerful machines there. And in fact, towards the back, um, you can see future Lola Cars owner, the late Martin Bahrain, who's a, who's a very talented peddler. Uh, and I think you can just see the roof of his E-type there. He and, uh, I'm not sure why he was starting at the back in that race, but he, him and... Uh, Dave Beams were uh, notoriously were mixing it in that uh, that year, 1977, considerably. But that that car had been built uh, in 1971 originally, and Dave had done some um, hill climbs and uh, sprints in it. And in fact, he he won a good number of those. I think he won a, at least a dozen uh, sprints and hill hill climbs. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he put himself on the map considerably so uh, he also got some good sponsorship from um, a famous specialist car um, s- uh, sales outlet car dealer a company called Wheels of Acton and they got behind him and pumped some money into his, his campaign um, it's 1976 he, he first really went on cir- into circuit racing in the BRSCC's production sports car championship, and he took two wins in that. But as I said earlier, it was '77 where he really came into his own, and he won the uh, he won he won 17 out of 19 races outright that season, which is going some compared to when you were think what he was up against and cars he was up against and drivers indeed. And to give it his proper title, it was the Certina Watch Swiss Watches production sports car championship. Um. He later sold the car to a chap called Steve Cole, who was runner-up, uh, who was runner-up in the championship in the same car in 78. And then it went to a chap called Lionel Shakespeare. And I'm not sure if he kept it um, until 2022 or it changed hands again. But that car caught my attention last autumn when I noticed a, a Silverstone Auctions catalogue landed on my desk. They're now called Iconic Auctioneers, by the way, but they were called Silverstone Auctions back then. And it was for an auction in September 2022. I think it, yeah, 2022. Uh, and the car was up up for, for auction and uh, it fetched the princely sum of £13,225, which isn't bad when you consider how much it cost when it was new and the car's history and its provenance. And it looked in pretty good condition. You never know of these things, but it did look in good condition. But it's just caught my attention, that, as being a very sort of typical of the G15, really. An underrated underdog um, and a fantastic car. Um, talking about Roger Davis, I spent a nice time with him a couple of years back at Castle Coombe. He and his son, John, they've restored a picture will come up here. Uh, a very, very nice, very fetching yellow G15 that they spent a lot of time on restoring and bringing back to... Uh, uh, top notch and uh, probably in better condition than it was when it was originally built and i believe they're um, they're up to their tricks again and uh, currently restoring a second one so i should be looking out for that sometime soon but uh, 
nice to to pay a little tribute to not only Janetta, not only the Walklitch, not only Ivor, but to uh, Alison Davis and of course Dave Beams, the greatest G15 driver of all, probably. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little episode. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, if you'd be so kind as to click on the subscribe button, it won't cost you a single penny. Um, and when you're there, you'll see the little drop down, the bell. If you click the little bell, you'll see the word all will come up. If you click on that, then you'll be notified of every video that we pop onto the uh, Total Kit Car YouTube channel. These videos are done in association with our video editor, Neil Winnington, who also has his own channel, N Wins Motors. So please do seek that out on YouTube and be so kind. Would you please give Neil a subscription? Uh, it all helps. Oh, and if you could, uh, I'm told I have to say this, if you could also hit the thumbs up like button. That helps helps very much with the uh, the channel's profile and... Apparently, it'll help with our algorithm, and it appear and it will appear in more specialist car-minded uh, folks' feeds. I'm told. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Wherever you are listening, um, wherever you are in the world, whatever time of day it is, you're picking this up. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy our little series of uh, little videos. We Neil launches, uh, oh sorry, Neil publishes his um, feature video around about the first of each month. And we've just started dropping these little uh, little trinkets in every week, every two weeks. And uh, they seem to be going down well. So thank you once again. I'll repeat myself again. Thank you for listening and uh, thank you for visiting. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you next time. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.